we got uh, some more interesting testimony from uh, the trial of Chad Daybill. And, you know, the apple doesn't fall that far from the tree. Mm. <laughs> I'd be really kind of concerned about the uh, the future of Chad Daybell's children uh, and what decisions or bad decisions they may make uh, going forward. I mean, this is, I mean, look who raised them uh, and look what that person ended up being, uh, had the potential to do or, or did. Uh, interesting testimony from his son. We're going to take a listen here. Uh, in just uh, a little bit. Uh, Garth Daybell. <laughs> what was your name? You sorry. Garth. <laughs> I'm sorry. Garth I, Daybell. I don't know anybody named Garth except for Brooks. Do you? Uh, Wayne and Garth. Oh, well, eh, yep. Another fine example. I actually, the, the guy who checked me out at, um, it was a Walmart or something the other day, looked just like, from Wayne. I'm like, is this like a didn't, am well, I being punked? <laughs> yeah, Tony, didn't he actually work at Walmart? Did he? I don't am know. Am I thinking of... This is the Dana Carvey Was it Toby Keith? I don't know. I'm gonna look this up. Not that it matters I don't the know. Daybell thing, but... We'll, we'll find out. Uh, but uh, Garth took the stand to testify about uh, the night his mother Tammy died. And the subsequent legal pressures he faced, his attorney, uh, Forrest Fisher, also testified, providing crucial insights into the grand jury proceedings that uh, Garth had to navigate. Garth Daybell recounted the night of October 18th, 2019. Garth, an eighth grade science teacher, described his involvement in a local haunted house in his routine of the evening before his mother's death, saying, I got home from the haunted attraction around 1 a.m. and saw... Their shapes in the bed as I passed by their room, Garth testified. I watched YouTube videos until around 3 a.m. and was later awakened by his father's call for help. I heard a thump, and then my dad said, Garth, come help. Garth recounted he found his mother, Tammy Daybell, partially off the bed and immediately tried to help her. I realized she's not breathing, Garth said, describing his shock and helplessness. The following morning, Garth was met with law enforcement, vehicles outside his home. Several officers got out and surrounded me and insisted I go with them, he testified. His phone was confiscated, and both he and his wife were detained separately for several hours. Let's take a listen to that. May 7th of 2021. Do you recall that day for some reason? I do. And what happened on that particular day? Um, it started out as what was going to be a normal school day, and I... So I want to stop you there. When you say a normal school day, would that be a day that you were going to teach school? Yes, I was going to go and do my job. Okay, what transpired on that particular day? I went out to the driveway to my car, and um, there were several uh, law enforcement vehicles across the street, and several officers got out and surrounded me and um, insisted that I go with them. Okay, do you recall the names of the officers and which agency they were with? Um, I remember that... Uh, Detective Ball was there, and detect Detective Ron Ball. Ron Ball. Okay. Um, Detective Hermosillo. That's Ray Hermosillo. Ray Her Hermosillo, and then um, uh, I called him Vinny uh, Kai Kamanu. Would that be Officer Kai Kamanu right that would, in the gray suit? That would be him. He was one of those that showed up at your house. Yes. Okay. And at that point, uh, what transpired? I told them, do you have a warrant? And they said, no, but we, you need to come with us anyway. Did they give you any choice? Um, I felt like I had no choice. And then what transpired next? Um, they drove me to the police station. They confiscated okay. my phone. Okay. Was anybody with you at that point? Um, at that point, no. Um, they. Did you later learn that they also took custody of somebody else? Um, yes, they had uh, then gone up to the door. Reaction, Your Honor. Move to strike that question. It mischaracterizes the testimony. Sustained. Okay. What what transpired after they took you into custody? Um, Objection, Your Honor. Again, misstates the testimony. Move to strike. I'll rephrase, Judge. I'm sorry. After the police officers told you that they were going to take you, what transpired next? Um, I was taken to the police station. And then I saw that they had also um, detained my wife and brought her in a separate car. Were you two kept together in the same room? We were kept in separate rooms the entire time. And when you say the entire time, how long 
did they keep you in the, the, the separate rooms? Um, about five or six hours. There you go on that testimony there. Yes. Yeah. Uh. You know, I'm, I don't want to judge, but I'm about to. I, do. I always preface it with saying I don't want to judge, yeah. but he he just okay, he sounds a little like adult. <laughs> I'm sorry. He looks I'm, like I'm a, so sorry. He yeah, looks I'm like a smaller he looks judgy. like a smaller version of his dad, really. I mean, not yes. anyone surprised by this. No. Gartha felt him. He looks like him, he sounds like him. Yeah. Hopefully he never does anything like him. Garth uh, felt uh, immediate pressure from prosecutors to change his testimony, stating they were telling me my story was untrue and I needed to change okay, it. At any point, did they try to talk to you? They did. OK. And what was the nature of the discussion? Um, they uh, were telling me that my story was untrue and that I needed to change it. Objection, Your Honor. Move to strike. Calls for hearsay. Overruled. When they when they say they told you they needed you to change your story or that they they didn't believe you, who is they? Um, the three detectives that I've mentioned. Were there any other detectives there? Uh, there was a detective Mattingly who was with my wife. Okay, and at some point, is it your understanding they were doing the same thing to your your wife? Um, she tells me they never talked Jack to her. Your Honor calls for hearsay. Sustained. And at some point, did you uh, ask to have an attorney represent you? I did. And at some point after, a f and you said it was between five and six hours? Um, yes. And at some point, were you released? I was. Were you subsequently charged with anything as a result of being detained? I was not. Did they, did they take any further action with you as a result of being detained? Uh, they did not. Okay. And then subsequent to that, was, an, was there another occasion when you were accused of, of or asked to change your story? Um, I was summoned to two separate grand juries. Okay, I want to talk about the second grand jury. Do you recall that? I do. And do you have an understanding of why you were summoned in front of the grand jury? Um, it was made pretty plain that I needed to change my story to fit theirs. Okay, and in, in the event you didn't change your story, you would be indicted by the grand jury? Yes, and they had a list of charges that they were threatening me with. Okay, when you say they were threatening with you, who are you talking about? Um, I didn't talk to them specifically okay. myself. Um, I had asked for an attorney who was in, going in between us. And who was that attorney? Um, his name was Forrest Fisher. And at this point, you are willing to waive your uh, uh, attorney-client privilege and allow Mr. Fisher to discuss the case? Yes. Okay. And your understanding of going in front of the grand jury is that you were going to be indicted unless you changed your story. Yes. And you know what prosecutorial agency was attempting to do this to you? Um, I believe it was Fremont and Madison counties. Okay. And at that point, uh, did you testify in front of that second grand jury? I did. Okay. Now, before you testified in that second grand jury, you had previously testified in a grand jury that was related to your father. Is that correct? Yes. And at that point, you told us what you believed was your version of the facts of this case, correct? Correct. And at the second grand jury, they brought you in and, and, and the focus of the second grand jury, did you understand that to be you being charged with a grand jury offense? Um, it, uh, I understand that it was that way. I felt very, um, I was feeling extremely pressured. Pressured by who? Um, the prosecutors. And at some point you testified in front of the grand jury. Is that correct? Correct. Did you tell relatively the same story to both grand juries? I told the identical story. At any time, were you ever indicted by the second grand jury brought by this by the prosecuting attorneys against you? I was not. Okay. You probably should have been. Uh, Forrest Fisher Garth's yeah. attorney uh, took the stand to provide his account. Fisher, based in Driggs, was uh, called to provide legal services for Garth during uh, the grand jury proceedings. The focus of the grand jury was on Garth, Fisher explained, noting that Garth had previously testified and now faced follow-up questions potentially about perjury. Fisher recounted his instructions to Garth during the proceedings. I told him to answer only the questions being asked, and if 
He wasn't sure. Garth could consult with me, Fisher testified. He emphasized that Garth should not talk to the media. Fisher also addressed whether he warned Garth about potential traps in the grand jury. I don't recall exactly, but wouldn't have been surprised if I did because Garth had already testified, which Fisher said. Garth's testimony revealed the emotional toll of the events. He learned about his mother's exhumation uh, unexpectedly from his sister Emma. It uh, was a complete surprise, Garth said. He described his normal school day interrupted by law enforcement's presence at his home, leading to a deeply distressing experience. Garth also spoke about his father Chad Daybell's religious beliefs, contrasting them with his own. Garth described his father's beliefs as more traditional, closer to how LDS faith was practiced 100 years ago. I teach and believe in evolution. I teach to my students... I teach the Earth is 4.5 billion years old as opposed to 6,000, Garth said, highlighting his more scientific perspective. He also discussed his father's views on spiritual concepts like the 144,000 and the practice of casting out evil spirits. Garth acknowledged partially sharing some of his father's views on light and dark and opposing forces, but did not fully align with Chad's more extreme beliefs. Let's listen to that. When you talk about the differences between your religious faith and your father's religious faith, can you identify some of the differences that you believe? You 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 believe you're a you're of the mainstream LDS faith. Is that fair? Uh, yes. And you testified previously that your father's more traditional or or fundamental or more traditional, I guess. Yes. And what would be the uh, the differences that you um, identified as as differences in interpretation? Well, I. I teach and believe in evolution. Okay. I teach that to my students. Okay. Um, I I teach that the earth is four and a half billion years old as opposed to 6,000. Okay. And do you share your father's views on light and dark? Uh, partially. Jesus. Okay. And, and explain that to me a little bit. Light and dark to me mean like good and evil, uh, good and bad uh you know opposing forces okay okay mm -hmm. and did your mother and father share similar views of a fundamental lds faith they did okay and your mother shared his your father's beliefs to your knowledge of this light and dark uh yes what about the idea of putting numeric numbers on people who are identified as either light or dark they did that every now and again Okay. And they did that in your presence? Yes. Okay. Now, your understanding, and I'm, I'm going to hack this, uh, um, this person, but I, I think I previously yesterday talked to you about the book Saints and about a... a, a, a um, New All Night? New All Night. We talked about that yesterday, right? Yes. And in that situation, there was a, uh, um, a, a casting of a sword, correct? Yes. And who was doing the casting? That was Joseph Smith. And who was he casting? Um, he was casting a, a devil, as they described it, out of New All Night. Okay, and at the end of the casting, and, and was this more of a traditional story of the LDS faith? It's one that uh, it's usually included in storybooks about the church history and stuff. Okay, but you would would you agree that it's more of a fundamental? It's not necessarily as mainstream as it once was? Yes. Okay, so it would be more attend to your father's beliefs. Yeah, I don't know if it's one that would be told as often anymore. Okay, and in that particular situation, uh, this is the prophet of your church, Joseph Smith. Yes, and at that point, he expelled the uh, the devil or the the demon from Newell Knight. Yes, did Newell Knight die after they expelled the demon from him? No, he went on to do great things. Joseph Smith, uh, by the way, also was arrested and convicted in New York and was found guilty of being a con artist uh, and a necromancer, which basically he believed he was a wizard. Uh, he was convicted uh, four years before he uh, published the Book of Mormon. <laughs> Court documents do prove he was a convicted criminal. Uh, Joseph Smith uh, said that the moon was inhabited by people six feet tall who dressed like Quakers and lived to be 1,000 years old. Um, so, and that's that's just touching the surface of the prophet Joseph Smith. Uh, <laughs> anybody buys into this shit show. But hey, it turned into a, a, a religion. Um it's a lot like Scientology um, in its own fucked up way.
Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, if, if you if you have this belief system and and it's it's said to you that this is, uh, you know, this is fact and this crazy shit is possibly real because this convicted criminal said it a long time ago. Um, it, it's not hard to understand why someone could believe some of the shit that they do. And the correct answer when you're asked, do you share any beliefs with your father? The answer is no. It's not kind of. The answer should be no. Isn't that disturbing? Yes. Yes. Yeah. He it's wow. it's all disturbing. It's it's all completely fucked up. They got the testimony attorneys for both sides uh, engaged in detailed questioning. Prosecutor Lindsey Blake asked Garth about his awareness of the grand jury's intent and his interactions with law enforcement. Defense attorney John Fire focused on Garth's perceptions of his father's beliefs and the pressure he felt from prosecutors. As the session concluded, Garth reaffirmed his belief that the prosecutors were pressuring him to alter his testimony. It was made pretty plain that I needed to change my story to fit theirs, Garth said, highlighting the intense scrutiny and legal challenges he faced. Forrest Fisher's uh, testimony wrapped up uh, with his uh, confirmation of providing legal counsel to Garth, emphasizing that there were no charges against him. The court adjourned shortly after Fisher's cross-examination by uh, Prosecutor Blake. So, there you go. There's, uh, it's an interesting one to keep watching, especially seeing Chad's kids up on the stand. Man, I tell you, I, you know, it sounds like they're very close to wrapping and it just feels like we've wasted some time here. I know we have to go through all these steps, but the dude is guilty. Let's just end this. When you know, you're, you're it's best, thing I'm not in charge of the judicial system. But when your best witnesses are your kids and your kids also kind of share your fucked up beliefs. And we know the fucked up beliefs that like putting numbers on people of light and dark scales. And you're like, Oh yeah, they did that. That doesn't bode well for dad at all. I don't know. No. I mean, they, 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 yeah, you just said earlier, he seems like adult. It's cause he is, he is adult. Um, it, it's, it's, it, there's no way this is going to end. Well, I, the, I think the, the biggest question now is will Chad get death? And, um, yeah, I'm Feels cool like with it. that. I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. Want to listen ad free? Want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.